What's up, guys? Uh, this is Andre and Chase with the fourth episode of the Jiu Jitsu Junction podcast. And on this podcast, we're going to be discussing the different stages of being a beginner slash white belt in Jiu Jitsu. So I like breaking it down in terms of like, at least the beginning of even understanding what Jiu Jitsu is. Uh, I think the first stage is kind of the complete ignorance of, you know, jujitsu or or even like fighting in general, because most people don't have hardly any experience in any kind of fighting or grappling or martial arts. So people go in with some pretty wacky ideas of how they're going to do. <laughs> We're talking about the type of uh, complete not understanding where they wear a karate gi to a gi class like oh, that type yeah. of not understanding right like just your first time you didn't know you yeah. seen you thought it was gi yeah you typed in gi on google and the first thing that popped up was the karate gi yeah no problem <laughs> that's, that's that's not that big of a deal i mean you gave it a yeah. shot right <laughs> um but like it's very easy to walk in uh, with complete ignorance because you know we're not even allowed to like touch each other on playgrounds as kids yeah. like like it's true, especially not yeah, now. yeah right. and like it, it used to be where you would understand how some of those things would go because you'd get in little tiffs that usually meant nothing when you were kids and now that's like not even allowed yeah so um you know everybody had it, some experience in generations past of having some kind of minor physical altercation right and mm -hmm. now we have people highly overestimating how they think they're going to do yeah. when they walk onto the mats hey, for the first time they see it watched, every day <laughs> they've watched a lot of they've watched a lot of videos they've yeah. they've seen a lot of fights yeah yeah so they have they have this crazy and I mean, they're 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 a man or, or a strong woman. Like they yeah. they have they're strong. They're, you know, they yeah. they know they're tough. They've they've never maxed out their physicality, so they 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 always feel like they've got enough left in the tank to do something <laughs> if it really came down <laughs> to it. And it's not really the case. Yeah, I love it. I love like the the guy that comes in. And he, he's athletic. He's strong. Yeah, you look at him like he's a good strong. And then. You know, he does. You know, he runs. Or uh, my favorite is a CrossFit guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those are those are. When those are man, he's like, you know, I do CrossFit, and man, he's in super. He's strong. Yeah. He's explosive. But you hit about two minutes and twenty seconds, yeah. and he's looking at you and be like, man, and he's dying. He's like, oh, it's a different shape, and it's like, yeah, you know, it, that's the. Oh, it boils down to efficiency, <laughs> like they, like the whole the whole. Uh, being fit things uh, it's being fit for what uh, there there for is sure. there is general fitness and crossfit guys and girls are really high in that but if you're incredibly inefficient when you're doing jujitsu you're gonna get real tired yeah. real quick yeah I'd expect to get tired at first right you might as yeah. well yeah, yeah that's a good one yeah so so these are these are all also, also fitting into this category is the I just see red bro people and that's just, you know, it's a product of, you know, people, ego. not, not right. people, ego, people not really having any, um, a, there's no contact with reality when it comes to like physical altercations. Cause well, you're not most really of the time, if you're louder, uh, posture more in public, like if you, if you cause more of a scene in public, most of the time people will back down. Yeah. Um, for sure. You know, so there's never really a threat of physically coming in contact. And like when you, so you could build this, this scaffolding of, yeah. uh, of a super, yeah, well, every time I get loud and I make more noise and people listen to me and yeah, I slam my hand and <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work on the mat. That's because I'm tougher. That's because I can beat them up. Okay. Yeah. The only time they're slamming their hands on the mats is when they're tapping in, in yeah, complete funny, panic a, and they just look at you befuddled, like what the world it's like yeah it's, it's yeah. different buddy it's okay yeah and then like three to five more times during that same round they're gonna come after you harder and harder yeah. and harder <laughs> and they're gonna drown more and more and more and that is like that's the first stage is just it's kind of like uh, breaking a horse you know <laughs> wait hopefully it's not your first stage hopefully 
you go into it with a different mindset and open mindset, and we skip this first stage. <laughs> yeah, so the not, second stage, this yeah. leads into the second. Yeah, the one, second, right? the yeah. second stage. It would be great if uh, the second stage is your first stage. Yeah, let's let's skip the first. So we're trying to do is create better white belts, right? So yeah. let's skip the first stage. You're listening to our podcast, right? Yeah, like, for so sure. Yeah, Jujitsu Junction is pointing you in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please skip the first stage. Yeah. So so the second stage is known ignorance. You know that you don't know jujitsu. You know that you probably you've probably never redlined in any kind of uh, fighting or grappling environment, and yeah, that's a better place to start. <laughs> that's the place to start and yeah. to live from from that point on. That's like the yeah. If we can if we can go ahead and get to this stage, you're already kind of embracing what what you what you need to get from jujitsu. Because yeah. usually jujitsu people talk about jujitsu being the humbling, you know how humbling it is, and yeah. You, uh, all those, you know, all the, the famous guys, Jocko and all of them talk about how Jesus is one of the hardest things in the world because you physically got to go with someone else. And that's something that you really never, never do. Yeah, not anymore. You know, so it, once you get to this stage where you've got that known ignorance, you know, you can really learn from there. You can really uh, listen from there, you know, until you kind of are at this stage, you're, you're just butting your head against the wall. Yeah. And there's a lot of tough walls in it. Yeah, yeah. If, you're, if, you're, if your cup is full, you're not going to be learning. You got to em empty the cup. You could either walk in humble or you can be humbled. Yeah. Uh, it's much more pleasant to walk in humble. It's, it will happen. Yeah. Okay. It will happen. So. Yeah. And and even even as you progress throughout white belt, throughout blue belt, throughout whatever, um, yeah. you know, every once in a while I need to be broken too. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's understood. Yeah. So, uh, so known ignorance, like it's, it's a pretty, it's a, pretty powerful place to be because when you're when you know that you don't know you're open to learning the skills and and doing what you're told to do instead of what you think you should do yeah, not not putting value on winning the position because what happens a lot of times you get somewhere and you're like oh this isn't working so you try something different or try yeah you know, the, no like know that you don't know so you need to you need to stick with what you've been shown Mm -hmm. You know, and try to do that. That that'll help there too. Just understanding that, like, yeah, you can look around at your training partners and you can see what they're doing. You can be rolling with a training partner who might also be wearing a white belt and pick out the skills that they have. And like being able to pick out the skills of your training partners and of your of your instructors in a very open and you know respectful way honest way you know if Man, you're if you're it. open to the learning experience it's gonna it's going to be uh more pleasant for you and it's going to be much faster for you yeah uh, uh and other people are going to enjoy uh working with you more yeah you know that's that's probably the biggest one yeah everything you said's right on i don't have anything to add there you know other than i mean if you're doing those things if you kind of okay i know i know i don't know this mm -hmm. You know, I, I got to watch, man, every little thing he's doing, I want to ask a question about. Like, right. I, I have no, well, why is he putting his foot there? Why is he grabbing the elbow? Why isn't he grabbing the wrist? The wrist yeah. is closer. Yeah. You know, why isn't he grabbing the head here? Can't he just grab the head? Mm -hmm. You know, so like, uh, but but when you kind of already understand that, that known, people are more willing to work with you. You know, probably one of the most annoying things in jiu-jitsu is working with somebody where you completely know more than the person and they're trying to, you know, tell you the adjustments. Uh, yeah, for sure. I had a gym interaction yesterday with someone in a different class, but it was that way. And I had to be like, no, no, no I'm sorry. I'm, I'm telling you what the instructor is wanting you to get out of this drill. I promise. I, I, I know what he wants you to get out of this right. drill. So won't just try it the way mm -hmm. we're trying to do, it. or you can do whatever you want to do. That's fine. Yeah. You're going to stunt your growth though. You're going <laughs> to. Yep. And, and this, this one took it as far as where he went and grabbed Jeff and was like, Hey, like, is, is this, Really? Yeah, and he was like, "Hey, what exactly do you?" And, and he wanted, he had never trained with me, so he didn't, you know. And, and he I guess, know you. yeah, again, that's ignorance, right? Like, yeah. he's. I guess I put him in complete ignorance stays there because he he went right and he came over. And he's okay. I see what he wants now, you know. And it made a big. Uh, by the end of the class, he got he got it, and he was like, yeah. "Okay, I see it." Mm -hmm. Um, but you can tell he just kind of a uh, big guy. A lot of instructors just kind of let him get away with doing what he does. Yeah, you can get away with a lot yeah. when you're bigger and stronger. But it's because of the complete ignorance stage. Yeah. It's why they've allowed, like, like, listen, instructors and your training partners will allow you to, all right, if you don't listen, then just keep doing what you're doing. Yep. We've got a training partner that way. And it may have 
you know, for, for forever. It's like, okay, if you're going to keep doing that, you just keep doing that and we won't. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you, you stay there, you stay in place. Um, you let your, your physicality yeah. eventually decline and everyone will be past you. Yeah. So yeah, we got to get to knowing, yeah. known ignorance quick. Yeah. And, and during, during the known ignorance part, you're really focused on building up your knowledge base. You're not going to be like, oh, okay, so now I know these things because I've, I've been ignorant, I've been willing to learn, and I'm like absorbing these things. That doesn't mean you're gonna be executing them, yeah. right? So that's, sure. that's a much longer complicated process, but building up that big knowledge base, and people think, oh, white belts don't know anything. I'm like, ah, no, no, I actually yeah. think that if they, if they get through this to this stage, stage two or hopefully stage one, right? <laughs> if they get to the known ignorance stage, that's when they like, they're like, everything, everything, like their, their head is empty. They're ready to learn. Yeah, and they built. learn a bunch. They learn a bunch then, right? All, yeah. They, they learn, they learn quickly. a bunch, accumulate tons of knowledge. They, they, a, they ask questions. They get to the fundamentals. They, they, un, they try to, they start understanding why movement is happening in certain ways. But that doesn't mean they're executing right. And that's, that takes years mm -hmm. that I, I think that you start really truly executing jujitsu, like starting somewhere in mid blue belt. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right? that, that's kind of what leads into the next stage, right? Is yeah. okay. You kind of feel like you got enough knowledge now Yeah. and you're like, wow, uh, okay. Yeah. Now, now it's time to start going hard and yeah. you start going too hard yeah. and you don't really know as much as you thought you knew. You yeah. Know, so it maybe even repeats. Well, this. At least you're not applying it the yeah. way you you think you know it. Yeah. And and obviously, uh, you're not going to have ass, uh, assimilated everything in the best way possible because you're a beginner, right? Yeah. Um. So you you have all this total knowledge, but you haven't you don't have the context to sift through all of that total knowledge and create an effective, you know, jujitsu uh, full, full skill set, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't have, I, I think that once you start learning, you know, as a white belt, you, you learn a lot of times, you know, now there are people who learn super fat, but most of the time, like you learn a move, you know, and that that's, it's the way instructors teach, you know, over a six month period, you may get, I don't know, let's say 10 submissions. Um, but you might not get, 10 submissions and then the next two counters after that. So like you're going after the move that you know, and that's kind of like where like, you're going hard and then you lose it and you're in a bad, like, man, I just need to go harder to get it. I can't get the move. Yeah. And it's like, no, there's a whole book that comes after that. Like yeah. I, you just don't, and you show them like, oh man, I didn't think I was like, yeah, like yeah. you just hadn't been in it long enough. And like you're, and, and that's obviously the good, the, when the person has a good reaction to tell them they're going too hard, you're like, yeah. They're like, oh man, I didn't think about it. Like, yeah, man, there's a lot of stuff there after that. I, was like, I just think I wasn't doing it right. Yeah. I was like, yeah. no, you were doing it right. It's like, and I get that's why you were trying to go harder. But no, there's there's a book after that. Like, man, once you go there, like that's a setup for three other things. You yeah. Know? So so in like in jujitsu, like you start out with the simple tools, right? You you're if you're going to fundamentals classes, you're a beginner. You're gonna be able to execute simple tools and the, the first tool in this metaphorical tool belt is a hammer mm -hmm. right so it's the simplest tool we've got yeah. right so the hammer might be a kimura if you're a big guy the hammer might be a high agility arm bar if you're like a small guy yeah. who's naturally athletic right? or a fast back take right Fa yeah. or a fast back take you know all like you you have yeah. one tool and if you have one tool that's been effective, it's easy to get trapped into using that one tool that you've developed. And that's why people go too hard. Like, okay, if this doesn't work, what are my other options? These pieces of crap that I haven't been able to pull yeah. off in any yeah, vault. I got this hammer though. <laughs> yeah, but I've got this hammer. Let me swing it harder to drive you're, it through. You're right. Real. So so like that's like the, the kind of the the next stage is like you're going too hard because you're trying to make this one or two tools fit every situation and that that might even look like i'm stuck in this position i have to get out of this position so you'll blast through it in order to get to the position where you could use your hammer right so 
Yeah. So that's 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 what it seems like to me as to why people end up going too hard as a phase in white belt. It's because they've got like one or two simple simple tools and what are they, like it's natural. What are they supposed to do other than use those tools that they have? Well, I think uh, I think sometimes this the, the first one kind of creeps back in during this third stage. Um, the ignorance, the, the complete, complete ignorance. ignorance. Yeah, they're like, oh, I've got a few things now. You're we're back level. Right. We're back even. And I've watched yeah. it in some of those really good, like strong athletic guys. Yeah. They get three or four things. They're like, oh, wait a minute. No, we're back even now. Yeah. We've got a kid. We've, we've got a guy who's moving into blue belt. You teach him a leg lock or two, and he thinks he's even with everybody. <laughs> is it is it the same guy? Yeah, right? for sure. Right? It's pretty <laughs> yeah, easy, though, yeah. right? That's an easy yeah. understanding because, and all that is is complete ignorance. He yeah. he just got a move or two that kind of levels his playing field, yeah. and and that's just it's just ignorance because it's not because then the person he does that to that has that that has those leg locks, uh, oh, he's yeah. in deep, 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 deep water, and he can't he, he don't know how to breathe in that water. Yeah, you know, so it's mm-hmm. like. Uh, that you know don't let that complete ignorance really ever kind of creep back in because you, you're going to have during this phase two you're going to have upper belts if they don't say it during your role and most of the time if you're going too hard they'll say it um well i don't know about that one i think, I that, think most of the time i'm probably being uh, yeah i think that's a little generous after your role though right the most or is that just something no, holy people, cow people. that's something that i do i couldn't I, I couldn't imagine rolling with somebody and not explaining to them because I, I understand it would yeah. just be hard. Like, and I kind of got tears when I do it. Like most of the time from this point right here, I kind of can feel, and I, I know this because I've been around it a while, yeah. but I can kind of feel Maybe on our last podcast, we talked about reading the people that you're going with. Yep. And yeah, for sure. Um, from that point, I can kind of feel what, what's happening. Yeah, and those, and those... there's been times where I've done this to give me a, a good, heart, and they give it hard when I'm like, Hey, Hey, easy. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing jujitsu. Like, yeah, right. You know, For like, sure. uh, but I guess that's something. That's a, that's so. I wish everybody kind of did stuff. I, I wish people one. talked more too. But um, when, when you're on the mats, sometimes um, things get a little bit more uh, primal, especially in places that don't have good cultures. And, no, you know, right. like, you're, you're not going to get the smash everything culture in certain types of gyms um like the family oriented gyms right um this is this is the first mma gym where that didn't have the absolute smash culture yeah. um yeah. but like visiting mma gyms you get a lot of smash culture right i think that's because a lot of our higher little guys at our gym are our big jiu-jitsu players yeah yeah that's they're, probably they're, it yeah. You know, so it plays a big role. We get to we get to kind of carry that jujitsu culture around everywhere and really clear we clearly communicate that with mm-hmm. hey, this is jujitsu class. Yeah. You're not coming here to like that's the two classes before that. Like this is jujitsu. You're trying to learn the game of jujitsu. So we really promote that. So I guess it's hard sometimes some of these conversations we have because man, we have a good there's a good culture there's, there's there a good as core. far as and, and I I'm not saying that like the majority of all jujitsu people don't do things right. I would say that generally speaking, people want to be friendly. They want yeah. to like, but they might not have the communication toolkit to like correct in real time. Yeah. Like I think it's far more common for people to whine about each other <laughs> after no, the rolls right. are over. Right. So I think because that's easier. Uh, people, be transparent. Come on. Yeah. Uh, like people, pe- right, like they though. can they can disagree with you, you know. You can you can. I usually have to talk to people because people come to me to whine about people. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah. So so that's can, what yeah, that's what yeah, most no, people do. Sense. It makes right. sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, that's why you, I've had to have that conversation a lot of times. Yeah. Like me having to have it because somebody's coming like, man, did you see that? And I was like, ah, yeah, I saw it. It was that bad. And they're like, yeah. yeah. I'm like all right, but they couldn't really, and they're good, you know, good people. And I, they, yeah. they want the better for yeah, the guy. They just sure. couldn't to. Because I guess once you slap hands, it's like, hey, it's on. Yeah. You know, it kind of hits that little, like, mm-hmm. this is real, you know. Well, you, like, like yeah. also when you're approaching it as a professional, Chase is a professional, um, you you think about it more than some guy who gets to train once or twice a week. Once or twice a week, he, he that's not a lot of time. Yeah. But you can develop this skill like intentionally 
to like kind of bring things back. And I think it's probably the most important skill you can have. And yeah. like all of these stages of white belt, all of these stages of learning and not just jujitsu, but any complex skill, you're going to have like, you know, varying amounts of how, how much you think you're ignorant how much how much you actually yeah, are sure. ignorant and like that's just part of learning a complicated skill yeah. and the thing that makes that's it growth. that's yeah, growth yeah, yeah that's, that's just growth that's good we want that yeah we want growth and adding in the fact that jujitsu is simulated fighting makes it hard for people to relax and like like there's hormones in play there's more ego when it comes to actually getting beat up right yeah yeah it's the most physical it's the closest thing a lot of people's had to a fight and i get yeah. that yeah for sure it's yeah it's definitely the closest that most people get yeah like when when you look out which yeah. it will prepare you the most for phys if there is a potential chance out in public yeah uh, every other self-defense it is what it is yeah but you you physically need to like if you want to prepare self defense wise you need to physically have hands on hands on you with someone else trying yeah. to do something to you yeah. to build scaffolding for any self defense. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little kid there. Like for, for sure, like like it's a, a stress inoculation. <laughs> yeah. yep. And when when you get when you get used to dealing with that kind of stress, um, it becomes easier to to stop returning to the the like the ignorance yeah. stage where you just end up yeah for sure you end up going in the going too hard going too soft focusing on winning um and like all of all of the things that kind of prevent you from hitting the right flow to grow right so <clears throat> so the next the next stage which you know happens that's kind of like parallel to going too hard is going too soft and that's just like the the Going too soft is like not really having a, a full idea of your own game plan or your maybe one of your techniques has gotten so good you could be soft with it, but you're still suck at other things, yeah. right? <laughs> like it's just it's almost like uh, going too hard is trying to use one or two good tools. Like don't don't allow me to do don't allow me to do like going too soft, don't allow me to do everything. Like Right, like, I, I'm, yeah. Too, too, I think that the root of being too soft is probably um, searching for, for new tools or trying to apply too many tools and ending up with, like, decision fatigue or... Yeah, like, stuck in, stuck in the middle, like, yeah, you, you don't you really want to try anything. I don't, I don't know, like... It's it's that you don't have it's a, a weird, full. It's a weird. It's a weird state. Yeah, so. it's it's probably probably. So I know people that I can give you example, but it's hard to describe really. Um, they're just never assertive with anything. Yeah. Um, they never. Maybe maybe too soft is just not matching your opponent. Maybe that's just base baseline. Like they're just not, not matching an opponent. You know, because someone can't go super intense with you if you're really soft. Well, they, <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they definitely can. Yeah, if, but not not much. Like if you're extra salt, like you have to pick it up a little bit to stop them from being. Yeah, I think people ragdolling. Right? I think I think people that are going too soft often just get ragdolled. Oh man. Um, but I mean, it goes it goes down to the the root of not like matching energy. Yeah. And you and in order to maximally learn, you have to ride this this middle line where things are not going so hard or you're not putting in so much effort that you can only think about your hammer and you have yeah. to be not uh, backing off so much that it stops being like a learning exercise. So riding this middle line between and actually hitting like a, a flow state, like there's this, there's this theory of optimal learning and I don't remember what it's actually called, but like where you where you're working at something that is at a at a level of difficulty where it's not hard enough that it becomes unpleasant, and it's not easy enough that you get bored, and it also applies to just how much effort you're doing. Like 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 if you think about it in a very physical term, 
like a jog versus a walk versus a sprint. And the the amount of uh, physical and mental effort you want to be going into your jujitsu roles is somewhere in the middle because that's where you're able to learn and apply new skills. That's what, in my opinion, that's what flow rolling is. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> I can even back that up kind of, uh, you, you laugh every time I go to it, but heart rate. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I, when I aim for flow rolls, I can put my heart rate monitor on and I have to keep it, I can keep it around like the 140 range. And that's kind of where I'm not exerting too much physical force for what's going on. And I'm able, it's, it's exactly how you described it, where it's not too much, too much effort, too little focus. Like it's just right, right in the middle. Um, yeah. So there is that that is a maybe that's that's what they're that's what they're looking for in this stage is that that uh they, not, they know they shouldn't be going too hard yeah not but they don't know what everything. to do yeah right they they don't know what the right thing is right yeah <laughs> they, they don't know what the right thing is so they go very opposite right it's not that's not <laughs> hopefully that person watches it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I'm telling you, if you fix that, you're probably really you're probably getting close to that uh, blue belt line, right? Yeah. Because like, that's if you if you've already went to that two soft phase and you're actually learning, because you're trying to learn moves. And, and there's a there's something there's super value to learning moves. Um, I guess maybe a little help hit there. Like if you're in that if, if that stage is where you're at, or if you're, you're like, man, I just feel like I'm not uh, winning anything right now, or you know, nothing's working, like. Let's start adjusting to to the point, and, and this is where I would find first to the point where you don't win anything, but you can kind of just stop everything. Kind of that uh, that fifty fifty mark. I talk about it so much, and that's something that I try to do with all of our white belts. Is the fifty fifty mark where like if you're going too soft, then you're probably going on a scale of one hundred twenty, and your opponent's probably going eighty. You know, let's let's start working at forty sixty forty five fifty five, and then trying to get to fifty fifty. So we can uh, start adjusting our tempo, and th then that's where we're able to learn everything. And that's that's probably where I would live is just trying to do everything fifty fifty, yeah, to get to get over that hump. Because you know, otherwise you're going too hard, you're going too mm -hmm. you know too soft. So that's a super valuable white white belt yeah, conversation sure. there, right? It's, yep. So I'm gonna because you have such a a crush on this idea of the heart rate uh, thing, right? I love it. <laughs> so the heart rate I thing. Love it. Like when you get above a certain heart rate, I don't know. It, it's going to differ based on the person, but like yeah. if you, yeah. And your ability you, to deal with stress under yeah. pressure. If you, that. if you get too high, you start relying on nothing but muscle memory. Yeah. Reactions. That's, that's the only thing that's going to happen. You're not thinking you don't, you're not, you're just going to be hitting those things that are already trained. The idea of, matching your pace down to something that's like one 140 heartbeat is probably somewhere around a slow jog for somebody yeah right so like you want to have full control of your brain without any hormones interfering yes and that's kind yeah. of that's kind of what we're looking at like we're we're trying to control things to the point where we never shut down our brain for Spot. learning that doesn't mean that you don't have yeah, it's hard for roles. learning. It's, yeah. it's just to learn. Like yeah. I, and obviously, I would love to compete at that kind of middle middle phase there, where I'm not working too. But you know, that's kind of different. That's for, that's that's a hard lift for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. That's that's like world champion stuff. Yeah. Um, most likely not world champion level training when you're no. A white so it's belt. for learning, man. It makes. But we're we're op we we're, we're optimizing learning. The whole white belt in general is learning how to learn a, a complex physical sport in an optimal way. And that's why like, you know, white belt can be a little bit and then blue belt, like that's where you're having, you have a little bit more control over your learning systems. You have, you, you're finding, finding a way to get to something that's more flow like, and flow like just really means learning optimized yeah in my opinion yeah so, closer to matching your, your yeah. partner matching right. their energy so it's it's kind of a uh, half effort on both your parts there's something really cool in jiu-jitsu where when you you can kind of use your opponent's energy right so right. 
if we're matching it at 50 50 then there's got to be some cooperation there you mm-hmm. know there's got to be we are we you know we are we're doing what we're doing because of each other <laughs> mm-hmm. a little tag to my ubuntu <laughs> we are who we are because of the people that surround us right but that's it though, right yeah, what's happening sure. is is not because of me yeah. it's because of both of us yeah that's so cool. <laughs> so like we've we like i also find i find this connection interesting so stage one we've got complete ignorance and then we've got something that i i think that stage three is when we is which is going too hard is kind of connected to the complete ignorance thing yeah. it, it's like you're 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 you've you filled up the cup and there's no room for something else right now. So you're not in a learning mode when you're in stage one and stage three. So complete ignorance going too hard, very, very well connected. And then when you know that you don't know, uh, you often are going to be going too soft and you're in this like um, knowledge accumulation, but without the focused learning that actually builds the physical skills and pathways so like you're you're gonna be like depending on where you are you're you're just you're gonna be moving between these things kind of and it's not like very sequential you're gonna be you're gonna be popping around and that's okay that's that's part of this would be like seasons like Mm -hmm. these are seasons of a seasons of a white belt like it's just things that are going to happen they're going to come because mm-hmm. and i guess man it's probably seasons of jiu-jitsu but i know we're, we're talking specifically a couple of the issues that you're going to have as a it's, white belt. it just it's so much bigger and easier yeah. to see when you're in the beginning yeah, yeah but the, i sure. think the same things happen it just looks different as you progress but that's it right cycles that's funny i, yeah. I haven't even thought about it like that but it's cycles bigger cycles and bigger yeah. cycles like mm-hmm. He usually happens around that brown belt time for 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 that where they're like, oh, I know I, I know everything, and they get into a room with a set of black belts. It's real God. black belts, and it's like, oh wait a minute, I know nothing. Yeah. Or they get promoted. I've heard a lot of black belts that get promoted to black belt, and they get to go to that promotion ceremony. It's all black belts, and <laughs> and they're like, oh wait a minute, why do I have? I, did y'all give me a white belt today? <laughs> have I been put back? You know, and I guess you know, that's. Yeah. It's a complete ignorance. He's like, man, I've got it. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. Shit. Yeah. I don't got it. So, yeah, it's probably, that's funny. I hadn't thought about it like that. But, yeah, it's just seasons. Mm-hmm. You're Se- kinda seasons of learning. And, yeah. and it's not just jujitsu. It's that just kind of cool. complex, complex learning, complex skills. You're going you're gonna to be, like, moving through these things. Um, but anyway, so we have uh, this next stage, which is, like, pre-blue belt, right? Pre- <laughs> like like this this is this don't is something don't you dare not say it the pre blue belt blues blues <laughs> sorry yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. pre blue belt blues there we go you feel better yeah i do i do because i you know i got a buddy who's in that right now <laughs> <Pre-blue>. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah so what what do you like this is something that chase chase wrote down so i'm gonna let him lead this yeah, one. I, I really no, uh, it's it's where you, you've kind of, man, you've been working hard. You do a lot of jiu-jitsu now. You know, you, you've kind of got, <clears throat> you're over the excited phase, and now you're like, no, jiu-jitsu is what I like to do. Man, I've got things that I'm good at, and then now everything I learn I can get good at, and I can build everything, and, man, I'm tapping out all the white belts. I, I get a blue belt every now and again. Man, I, Chase, I even, I, even get a, I even get a purple belt. Yeah. I could even get a purple belt out of it, maybe once or twice. <clears throat> Usually, I just kind of listen, and a couple weeks later, he'll come back and be like, "Man, that purple belt got me seven times." <laughs> yeah, they're like, "Okay, buddy." <laughs> hey, and, and then he, he's back to known ignorance, and now we're now we're getting closer to the blue belt. But uh, yeah. he he gets so sad because he's just like, "Man, everybody else got it." Listen, I tap. He got his. I'm sorry that I do it. His voice. I can't wait to tell him to listen. <laughs> I can't. I've known him. I've known him so long. I can't. Uh, yeah. I can't not not saying his voice. But that would have laughed every time I try to say it. <laughs> but he's like, man, I tap out that blue belt. I tapped him five times the other day, and he just got his blue belt. I'm like, wait, does this blue belt me? No, no, no. <laughs> but and I, and I can't say. I'm like, yeah, I know, man. I know. I, I get it. I get it. But. The pre blue belt blues and and all it does is 
in this phase, you kind of go back through a couple of them. Like he, he's stuck between going too hard or going too soft. Yeah, that's definitely. Um, true. And I've watched it. He's like, yeah. but man, if I if I don't go if I don't go that hard, and, and they they almost hurt me. He's like, because now they're getting me. I'm like, yeah, I get that, but so it's such a, he's in a hard spot now. Yeah, he's kind of in that middle, and it's blue bell blues because there's not really a man. It's hard. You just, uh, and, you and just keep going through the the cycle. Right? He don't listen to the listen to the fifty fifty. Yeah, he keeps pushing back hard, letting up hard, pushing back hard, letting up hard, and it's not you push and you push until yeah. you. Oh wait a minute, I won that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I lost that. Oh, I oh. Oh, now I'm stopping everything, and now we learn fifty fifty, and he could bump that bump. Mm-hmm. That's going to have to be a talk one day, just in general. Every, every like, time, like it's not like he's always too hard, too soft. When he rides the middle line, he's really man, good. really good. Yeah. yeah, but it's hard to find that. You know, yeah, you got to find that. Um, so that's the the pre blue belt blue. <laughs> yeah, he'll get them. It's okay. Yeah. Just keep working. It's jujitsu is such a long journey. Like what's I got? I asked him and. and and he laughed because I always give him these type of uh, things. But I was like, man, I was like, okay, how long is it going to take you to get your black belt? And he was like, probably 10 years. I was like, okay, 10 years from now? He's like, yeah, probably because I've been doing it. He's like, maybe maybe nine. I was like, okay, what's three more months on nine years? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, man, you always do that. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I've done it since I met you in high school. I've done it since you were waiting by my car. Like, it's okay. Like if you're committed yeah. to it, like yeah. it's okay. Like you're, you're, you're it's going to be fine. Just keep doing it. Yeah, just wait until you <laughs> It'll be okay. The Don't blood. listen to a lot of country music. <laughs> Don't drink a lot of alcohol because it will add up. <laughs> he, he's, he's told me about stories that they end up on a job site and there's a mat in the back room and all the guys don't believe him. So he has to tap them all out. <laughs> But it makes it feel better. But that's the blue belt blues. Uh, that no, no blue belt blues are different. He's a uh, pre blue belt blues. Yeah, the pre. <laughs> I'm sorry, the pre blue belt blues. Sorry. Yeah, but I thought that yeah. I could group it because he's he's wanting he's longing for he's longing for his blue yeah. belt. Yeah, he wants it. So like he, it's funny. Yeah, and then and then you get there, and then you season for several years. <laughs> you yeah. you and and all you're doing is the same stages, but faster. Yeah, it's crazy. And then, but then you, this is like, I feel like white belt is building the knowledge base and learning how to learn. Yeah. And, and learning, man, I think a lot of us learning those, like understanding that you're going to go through cycles. Like, yeah, I remember you talked about a cycle. He was like, man, I just, I'm holding on to things and I'm like, oh, well, we got to break that cycle. It's okay. It's a, it's a cycle. It's a season. Yeah. We got to break it mm-hmm. just like everything else is constantly moving. That's, mm-hmm. you're going to have, there's going to be a point where I'm like, Hey man, quit letting if somebody asks you to tap them out, man, tap them out. Like, mm-hmm. quit being too soft. Like, that's too too soft. You know, we're gonna go through that. I'm in it right. I, I'm breaking out of too soft right now in my jujitsu. Where I'm at, people better watch out. But <laughs> I've been allowing people in competition for years. To, yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I kind of so so to me the very <clears throat> end of white belt and where people should be like aiming. <clears throat> this whole time is figuring out how to play the game play the game like the complete yeah. game um like you 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 start understanding where to find these uh teeter points and it'll it'll change based on who you're going with and that's a skill too like oh yeah mo- super- moderating moderating what you do playing in someone else's realm so if someone's a really good guard player then and you're like somewhere comparable in guard passing then you you play that game with them and if someone else is better at something else and you're pretty well paired there then you go to something else right yeah. so so finding a way to find flow with all of your different training partners and and the the there's a recent crop of blue belts that happened at our gym and I swear to God, the 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 reason they got it is because they started playing. They got Boom. to they got to the playing stage. Yeah, because they wasn't holding. They wasn't trying to stop stuff anymore. Yeah. They wasn't trying to free. They wasn't, you know, they they wasn't trying to go too soft. Trying to go too hard. They mm-hmm. yep, they yep. they found they found and maintained their yes, ability sir. to flow and play. And I think that's why they got promoted. Like I'm, that was that was found. That was, and it's several several weeks in a row. And 
after like people were talking about it yeah they had the ability to keep it up because you'll find it you're, you're gonna you'll, you'll yeah. find it when they're like oh man that was, that was it but it, that, that could be partnered right so i have an ability when i roll with people to give to allow them to play the game yeah it help um, it helps them to get to that state so that they know it exists yeah right no, for sure that's the coolest thing like uh the the white belt we talked about earlier before we went on um every now and again because of the going too hard every now and again we've talked about mad enforcers and stuff before mm -hmm. but I, I had to grab the white belt and i had to kind of get on to him a little bit like and uh, i don't really smash people when i do that I, because if people that are going too hard they give you the energy to do everything so it's yeah. like he looks at me he's like man did i just walk into that i'm like yeah you did he's like mm -hmm. did i just give that to you yeah you did yeah you know but like that uh it, when he got done he was just like man that that I ain't never felt anything like that, you yeah. know, because it was just, it's different. Like I, I played the game with him and I, and I kind of showed him that, Hey, you can do this. Like it can be really easy. Like, uh, and he was kind of a photo. So it, yeah. Like once they, somebody will, somebody will show you how to play the game. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. you listen to the 50, 50 and try to find it. I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, I think that, that hmm. people, people who end up being upper belts in jujitsu and don't, you know, end up dropping out or the people who turn it into something that is more of a game so that they can they can play it and it becomes I love playing games yeah you know like, exactly um it's fun so do you have any like uh closing remarks or um pieces of advice for any pe any of the people who are white belts that are trying to like speed their way through these these phases or or if not oh. speeding then at least like progressing right yeah i mean well being comfortable with the stages you're in understanding no I, I guess it'd just be summing it all up right like it's just a phase it's just a phase you're going through um you know just kind of recognize that. that's the first stage in everything any any program you know it's recognizing oh wait a minute okay i'm going too hard right now or oh, wait a minute like i'm going too soft or you know oh wait no I, I i don't know anything like some of those just precursors like you go into it like that and we can you know cut the curves and it's it's just that it's just uh not staying in these stages too long not or these seasons too long not letting the season be too long like uh i, I know i know a, a jujitsu player um man and, and i'll let you know my goal is to help them progress but they are stuck in the going too hard phase with people that they are better than and they will not progress maybe a 10 years now they haven't progressed because when they go with somebody that they're better than they still go too hard um, and they haven't they don't try things they don't they're not trying to find that flow where they can play the game they could play the game with some people but that's why they haven't progressed um you know, so let's let's just understand. And he doesn't understand he's in that phase. He doesn't. But it's when he goes with somebody that's lesser than him, he is too soft. When he goes with somebody better than him, or or he's, it's like you can't. He can't find the middle. He can't. He's either going too hard with everybody. He's like, man, well, I'm letting everybody do everything to me now. I'm like, that's not. Yeah, you're going too soft now. We talked about it in yours and uh, Chris's game though, a little bit, like mm -hmm. that middle ground. Like we got to find the middle ground, and then we're really going to start learning. But it happens everywhere, right? It's not. But yeah, that's uh, that's why he hadn't progressed is yeah. because he can't find that that flow, that middle ground, that ability to give what you take, kind of equally. Um, yeah, I guess that's a closing. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's I, I I agree with that. <clears throat> Being aware of the stages is going to help for sure. Um, understanding where you're at and then making adjustments based on where you're at is going to speed things up. You'll go through the cycles faster and learn how to find flow, play the game, maximize learning. That's the whole point of White Belt is learning how to learn. So, you know, if you just keep an eye on that, and you're you build like self awareness and communication skills with your training partners, then that's just that's gonna be what pushes cool. the needle forward. Yeah. Like you don't have to think about it in terms of, you know, days, weeks, months, years, but like seasons, cycles, yeah. and just trying to like maximize your ability to play, maximize your ability to learn. And, you know, if you're when you're competing then it's 
that maybe it's time to rely on those those muscle memory connections. But yeah. when you're training, you should be looking at finding flow. I know I like people are always like, let's just flow, bro, right? And that's like a a thing. Uh, but I think that a lot of the people who say that don't understand it. Nah. So just just try it. You'll you'll feel it. It'll click when you're you're when you're moving constantly. Eventually, you're gonna figure out. Oh, this is what flow is. Yeah. You just have to be open to it and try try to maximize your ability to learn. So anyway, so this was the fourth episode of the Jujitsu Junction podcast. So if you have any comments or questions, then we would love to hear them. You can do it in the in the YouTube comments below and you know anywhere else you can find this podcast. So uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.